Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in today's video I want to show you how to play Pastorale or the Pastoral by Burgmüller from Opus 100. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons if you're looking for one, there's going to be information in the description below. Just a couple of words about the book. As always, Bergmiller's Opus 100 is one of my favorite technique books. It has character pieces, so not boring finger exercises, but small kind of romantic sounding pieces that incorporate a lot of technical challenges. So working through this book is going to help your technique, expression and style immensely. And the pieces are not very long, they are manageable and range from grade one all the way to grade five. Pastorale is a very peaceful, calm little piece. It says andantino at the beginning, so kind of walking speedish, and the tempo is given in a dotted crotchet, so six to six is uh, three quavers. The key signature is F sharp, so we are in the key of G major. It helps to play a couple of G chords before, and the G major scale. And the time signature is 6 eight, so we are in compound time, and we can see this from the grouping of the notes, three quavers and then a group of another three quavers. So the tempo is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's duple meter. So it's important to put a small accent on the first and on the fourth quaver of the bar to get that nice compound time feeling. And at the beginning, we also see dolce cantabile, so sweetly and in a very singing style, which just basically means legato, smoothly connected. Now, if we look at the structure of the piece, we have an A section where we have the chords and the melody in the right hand. Then we have a B section after the repeat sign, where it's a little bit different. Kind of a combination of the two and some double voicing, and then the A section comes back and we finish up on a little arpeggio. So A, B, A sections and in the first section let's have a look at the intro. The right hand starts with this kind of five finger motion where we have skips and steps and some bigger intervals So that's the introduction, almost like a little flute in the background or something. And key thing here is to get the right fingers very smoothly, very evenly, and let the hand follow that melody as much as you can. Very soft wrist, not tense and not flat fingers, curved fingers and follow the melody. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. And then the melody carries on. One, two, three, four, five. So what we have here is called an acciaccatura, a grace note. And this is a quick grace note because it's crossed out. If a grace note is not crossed out, the little note there, then it's a slow uh, ornament. And if it's crossed out, we play it really fast. So. The F sharp is going to be the ornament note and the E is the main note. So four, five, six, one, two, three. It's crucial to keep the beat here because what can happen is you can create an extra beat for that ornament note, but you shouldn't. So it has to play in one beat. Four, five, six, one, two, three. And then crossover, one, two, and now here we have another ornament, but this time it is not crossed out, so we're going to play it on the third beat. So one, two, three, E, four, five, six, one, two, three. One, two, three, E, four, five, six, one, two, three. So as you could see, this one wasn't so quick. This is called an appoggiatura and the other one is an acciaccatura, the fast one. Then we carry on. One, two, three. And it changes, modulates. And we are in D major in the dominant key. 
So the other key thing here in this right hand, which seems very simple, is that we have a lot of slurs. And in between the slurs, we need to lift up. So going back again to the first line, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, lift. Four, five, six, one, two, one, two, lift. So every time you see that slur, make sure you lift the hand up nicely and you phrase that melody in the right hand. With the rising melodies, make sure the hand follows and you can also add a little bit of dynamics when the melody is rising, get a little bit louder and when it's falling down, get a little bit quieter. It's called natural dynamics. Now in this first section, the left hand is extremely simple. It's just playing a G major chord, G, B, D. And the rhythm is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then a suspension chord, G, C, D, which is a G sus four, one, two, three, four, five, six, back to G, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and we're going to the treble clef here, an octave E. And we arrived into the D major dominant chord. The key thing when you put this first section together is to make sure that the right hand is much louder than the left hand because that's where the melody is and these chords need to be much quieter in the left hand and also be very careful that the, that the notes of the chord go down together as opposed to like some very flat fingers. I've seen things like this before. Okay, so curve your fingers, concentrate, and all three notes going down perfectly together. And then right hand comes a little bit louder. Here we had a little crescendo, so starting quiet and getting louder towards the end. Let's see the middle section. Right hand again has the melody starting on the high A in D major this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Lift. Accent, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's the end of the second section. So as you could hear again, lovely small phrases, but lots of stretches and changes of finger numbers. So you need to be very careful with that. And we have some tenuto marks, which means a slight pressure on those notes where you see the 10. And there's an accent mark on that C sharp. Left hand is a little bit more interesting here because we have a dotted minim, F sharp and C, but then we have quavers and a, a dotted crotchet in the end. So it's called double voicing because we have one voice in the bottom and another one at the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to hold down the bottom two notes for the whole bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back to the D7 chord. And G. Now left hand jumps into the treble clef again. Sharp, G, C, E, and the D is tied all the way through. Now hands together again, remember right hand a little bit louder than the left hand, and this middle section in general is louder than the first section and we have quite a few crescendos and decrescendos, so getting louder and getting quieter.
crescendo, decrescendo, and back to the A section. So the next part is repeating the beginning. changes, we go to a G7 chord, very difficult chord, 5 on the F, 4 on the G, 2 on the B, 1 on the D. Very hard to get those notes and keep the number 3 uh, above the keyboard, so really practice this chord. And C major. G major, finger change. So what we see in the end is little broken chord G, B, D, G, B, D, G. Very quietly it says diminuendo, get quieter, e poco ralentando, and get a little bit slower as well, and finishing very quiet. So starting louder. And it's all staccato, left hand, the G major chord, and G. Very difficult to control the sound when you want to go very quiet. So that's really all about this beautiful song. It has these three sections and it's all about the balance between the right and left hand, phrasing shorter melodies, introducing easier ornaments like the grace note, the acciaccatura, the appoggiatura, a little bit of a key change in the middle and some double voicing in the left hand. So these are the main challenges. But obviously keeping that melody singing all the way through is one of the biggest challenges of the piece. Think of the right hand as a violin playing the melody or sing along if you can, and that's really going to help with the legato. If you have any more questions about this piece, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, subscribe for more.